there? My name is Chris Nicholson, and I'm a professional honky-tonk boogie boogie ragtime pianist. A lot of people ask me, how do I play the piano? I and mean, how did I learn to play the piano? Um, I, I tell them it cannot really be taught the way how I play it. Because I think what happened is that it came from the gods, it came from heaven, of my gift. Um, my sister actually owned a little toy piano and she put it in my crib. And what happened is that my mom and my sister witnessed that I was actually playing the notes, listening, playing the notes very softly and not banging. Usually a baby will go up there and just, just bang and bang and bang. Not me, I just went up there and just listened to the notes. And this was, um, this was at the age of like three that I was, um, I was basically in my, I think, crib or playpen, and I actually had a little Sean Hutt's toy spinet piano in there, and, um, playing the notes, and I remember we had that piano for a very, very long time, until, um, our first real piano came into the house. When the first real piano came into the house, it was this big, humongous, boxy upright. I mean, basically, I, I can remember it. Um, it had a nice tone to it because I was so amazed. I was like, wow, from graduating from a little toy piano, which we had for many, many years, including when we still had the, when we had our regular piano, um, to this beautiful, big, boxy upright. Um, and to me, I thought it was gorgeous. You know, I was a kid back then. It was painted black and um, it had all 88 keys. It had ivory keys because I remember some of the ivories were missing off of it. And I, it kind of looked weird. But um, every note played, and we got it from our neighbor. It was downstairs. He was a musician, and he just gave it to us. So my mom took it in. My sister was actually supposed to play the piano, and she was supposed to take up the lesson. She was supposed to play the piano, and I think she kind of lost interest a little bit. So I went up there and I played my, my notes that I played again. And my mom taught me a little song that, uh, I just remembered, and my memory was so good back then, just, it was mostly designed for memorizing music, and when she taught me those notes, I thought, I thought she was basically one of the best pianists in the world, because that's what, um, those were the notes that I learned from there. Now, growing up as when I was a toddler to my adolescent years, um, I was a kid basically in a big city. Um, I grew up, I was born and raised in New York City. We had a town called uh, Co-op City, which is Riverdale. Um, and after that, before that, it was called Freedomland, which was an amusement park that my, my family went to when they were kids. Um, and I tell you this, just growing up when I was like five to six years old, I was a um, I was a kid that was in a world that didn't know what to do, and I had the piano, and the piano basically became my best friend. So every time I played the piano, I was happy, I was smiling. Um, even though I was playing beginner songs, um, I was just very, very in love with the piano. Um, we had a community that had over a thousand kids. We had basically um, a humongous sand pit called Pine Island. Uh, we had monkey bars. We had swings, tire swings. We had um, we had the rope that you swing back and forth back. And um, you know we we were pretty cool. The kids did double dutch. Uh, we didn't have iPhones, iPads back then. But we, um, we learned how to take care of each other. We learned how to basically, um, you know, entertain each other. And I played sometimes outside, which was very fun. But I always wanted to play the piano. No matter where I was, I wanted to play the piano. Now, you're wondering how in the world did I learn how to play the piano? Okay, so let me... So I try to tell you this in a quick story because it's, it is a long story. Um, what happened is that my mom, since we got the big piano in the house, um, my sister was supposed to play and her teacher was becoming my piano teacher. My piano teacher wanted to teach me scales and wanted to teach me classical. And it must have been the first time 
not even an hour, I looked at him and fired him. I actually said, you're fired, because I didn't want to learn that kind of music. Um, I wanted to learn the fun way of the music and everything. Um, so back then in the 80s, my friends were listening to pop, which was like New Edition, Michael Jackson, Prince, uh, Paul, well, Paul Abdul was like in the late 90s. Um, they were listening to rap, which was Run DMC, Fat Boys, Curtis Blow, um, a lot of other stuff like that. And heavy metal, which I cannot even name any of the heavy metal um, uh, artists. Uh, but they were listening to that. And so my mom, she she sang a lot of um, like St. Francis ballads. She sang like Barbra Streisand. She had a voice of an angel. And so she encouraged me on the music, and I used to listen to it and play it by ear. Um, you know, just trying. I didn't know what the names of the notes were, but I used to play it by ear. And so what happened was that she took me to this school on Fordham Road called the Little Theater School. The Little Theater School. The music teacher tried to do the same thing again, and I didn't like him, so I fired him. Two music teachers I fired. Uh, <laughs> I was very strict about my music. Um, the third music teacher, he looked like Winston Zedmore from the Ghostbusters. And I tell you this, he had hands that were big that could cover up my whole face. <laughs> um, and he said, well, let me, let me listen to what you could play. And so I, I played a little song. It was, um, it was kind of like a boogie woogie kind of thing, which, um, I taught myself. And then ever since then, I didn't read any music. And me and him were practicing a fun way how to do scales. And at the same time, we were practicing the new, my new way of learning how to do blues on the book. Ever since then, my music teacher taught me how to do my uh, blues scales and my, my uh, bass lines and the different chords. I just took it up on my own, and he was so wonderful. I wanted him to be my teacher for a while. We kind of got in trouble. Both of us got in trouble many times with the um, with the um, the manager because we was actually supposed to be learning how to read music and everything. So that we were playing boogie woogie, we had such a great time. One day I came back to Little Theater School, and he was not there. And I wonder what happened to him. And the uh, manager, or the owner of the school, said um, that he was actually terminated, and I didn't know what terminated me back then. So, there was another teacher there, and I remember getting up from the piano, closing the fall board, which is the lid, and said, you're fired. You're fired. I said, I don't want to, I don't want to do lessons with you. And I walked out, and my parents were there, and that's it. We left. Um, then I found out two weeks later they closed the school down. So it was it was kind of sad. As throughout the years, um, our first piano we had to throw away because after a while it just didn't work. So we got the second piano in the house, which was a nice, beautiful, elaborate upright. It was huge. It was brown. Um, you know, it was wood tone color basically, and it had carvings on it, uh, kind of almost like the one in the back there. Uh, but I tell you this, um, I love the sound of that upright. And then my mom turned on uh, the TV while she was cleaning. It was a Lawrence Book show. And I was like, wow, I'm hearing. The first thing was Joanne Castle playing the piano. And I'm listening to this lady play the piano. I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to do that. That's something I want to do. And ever since then, I always listened to... Um, the Lawrence Welk Show, I always listen to Joanne Castle. Lawrence Welk Show is not no longer filmed, but um, Joanne Castle was just, she became my idol, still is till this very day. Now, what was more funny, how I got into the piano itself is that my mom used to work at the Equitable Building, which was in Manhattan. So um, I wanted to go and explore Manhattan. So she said, why don't you go to Steinway Hall? I'm like, okay, fine. She said, it's two blocks, two blocks down this way and two blocks down that way. And so she said, son, don't get lost. 
if you get lost and do this, you'll never do this ever again. So I went to Steinway Hall and I called my mom on the phone and said, I'm here. And I tell you this, Steinway took me underneath their wing and basically taught me a lot of things about the piano. The hammers, like this action here, the hammers, the, the action, the keys, the strings, the tune pegs. They taught me so much about the pianos that it became my education. And that's one of the ways how I learned how to fix a piano. Um, right across the street from Steinway was Yamaha Communication Center. And that's how I kind of love the Yamaha pianos. Uh, Yamaha had keyboards, they had pianos back then. This was like probably um, 89, going to the 90s. Um, and I tell you this, from going back and forth from Steinway to Yamaha, and there was another two, there's two other companies. There was, there was a Baldwin company on the other side, and there was another company called Dietrich Pianos, which had nothing but old antique pianos. And so, learning from all of them, I kind of learned my history and what I was meant to do on this earth. What, I mean, it was basically entertaining the language. Plus, learning how to fix a piano. After a while, the sad news is that my mom's mother, my grandma Sybil, was getting sick. And we had to leave her mother. And then we decided to move to Florida, Miami, Florida, because most of her side of the family was here. And my mom's mother was in Jamaica, so she knew that we couldn't live in Jamaica. Um, but we live in Florida, so we could fly back and forth to Jamaica if we have to. But um, moving to Florida, I didn't have a piano. I had, to, I had to say goodbye to my second piano. And it was so beautiful because with the carvings, I wish I still had it this very day. Um, it had that beautiful saloon sound, and it just it played like a dream. Um, and I remember it to this very day. I still, um, I still miss it. Uh, I remember the first time when I opened up the um, the fall board that the lid went forward. I'm like, how does it do that? That's pretty cool. That's like magic. So I kept on closing, opening, closing, opening the fall board just to see the lid pop out. Um, and it's one of those lids that you could take off, which you know, nothing like a modern piano like this, a modern upright piano. But um, I had a Casio keyboard. I had a 61 Casio CT. 670 keyboard and um, and I took it with me and basically um, it went with me through junior high school I played the piano I pretended like that was my grand piano played the piano and I think what happened is that that's when I started also building pianos I built a grand piano case out of cardboard um, and placed the, the keyboard inside there and pretend I had a grand piano Growing up in Florida, as I kept on watching um, the Lawrence Welk show, I kept on getting more and more into my music. So I entertain my friends as much as I can. Uh, we had piano classes. I had a piano teacher. Her name was Miss Casey. Actually, it was Miss Casey and Miss Smith. And they both couldn't teach me music because of my eyesight. But I entertained. And whatever I could play, I played. And it was, um, it was, it was an interesting, you know, experience because I regained friends when I played. I realized that this became my friend maker. It's just basically playing the piano, playing the keyboard, and um, back then I didn't know anything about MIDI or music arranging, so I just kept on playing as much as I can on the piano just to uh, just to make friends because it was very very hard back then. I was a lot skinnier. I um, slurred my words a lot more, which I still kind of do a little bit now. Um, I didn't have any stage presence, I didn't have any, um, I just was afraid of the world back then. And every time I played, I gained more friends and more friends. And it just came to me that this is my friend maker, so when, every time I play the piano, people speak to me. And ever since then, I just kept on going. A lot of people always wanted to know, how did I learn ragtime piano? Well, as I kept on going through the years, um, you know, basically, I did learn ragtime a little slow, slower than the way how Joe Castle plays it. And what I did is I mixed in the ragtime with the boogie woogie, because I learned it kind, of, kind of like the boogie woogie blues at first, and then mixed it both together, just like how Joe Castle did it. I'm like, wow, this is kind of easy. This is pretty cool. 
and I studied the techniques of Joanne Castle when she is actually um, soloing and making her piano actually sing or tell the story. And ever since then, I still watch her and take her methods up to this very day. Um, and then what happened is that I asked my dad, I said, Dad, is it possible can I have a grand piano? And my dad said to me, son, if you want a grand piano, you're going to have to go to school, save up a lot of money, and have money saved for you to fix it, because it requires a lot of repairs. And of course, us growing up with the old, boxy old uprights, um, I kind of knew that was where it was heading. So, um, my cousins had a grand piano, and I wanted one so badly. I just like, if I have a grand piano, this will make me the happiest person in the world, you know? I was a little kid back then. So, um, when I first bought my first grand piano, um, it was a brand new grand piano. I didn't have it for long because I didn't, I didn't like it that much. Uh, I realized that I liked the older pianos better than newer pianos. The newer pianos, of course, was a lot prettier, but there's something about a newer piano that I really don't like better than an older piano. If it's a very well-known brand, new, newer brand piano that's been there for a long time that's still made the tradition, like Steinway, Mason, and Hamlin, Fazioli, um, those are the pianos that I love. Uh, Baldwin, you know. Um, but if it's something like an older piano, um, that basically has that soul, then there's no other um, words to actually put it. Because an older piano, for the kind of music that I play, it stands out more than me trying to play it on a newer piano. So, back then my dad was right, because throughout the years that I learned how to play the piano, the way almost like Joanne Castle, I kept on breaking strings, I kept on... Um, some keys kept on breaking and I didn't know how to fix it. So um, I took up the method of the, um, the piano book that, that I had. And I, that's when I learned how to actually fix them and repair them. And then I got a job um, here at Victor Pianos. Um, you know, I've been here for probably almost getting close to like 28 years. Um, I had my own piano store. I went back and forth from there to here. Um, nowadays, this kind of um, I'm I'm like doing you know I'm doing work here and stuff like that. But this is this is kind of more like my um, my second home. So every time I wanted to just get away from it all, I um, I kind of built a room back there so that I could sleep in a in a store and at the same time clear my mind and then work on pianos. And um, you know it's it's so cool. Because um, once you're at home, it's a different environment. Once I'm here, I can have my music, just my music imagination going, just going wild. And um, I tell you this, it, it brought out a lot of me. A lot of me, just, just pianos. And learning how to fix the pianos, I learned a lot more than what I learned when I was a kid. Uh, just tinkering with them, uh, taking them apart and trying to put them back together. I learned ins and out of the piano, uh, just working here and, uh, and just, just basically uh, seeing what I could test myself with just repairing a piano. My mom with my music was my biggest supporter, my mom and my sister. Um, I tell you this, my mom just recently passed away and it just broke my heart um, because I'm like, how can a beautiful, talented lady just go like that. And so I kept the, I kept the tradition, just basically keep on doing my music. Um, even the stuff that she taught me. My very first song that my mother actually taught me was uh, this song right here. I can still play it. And also she taught me this.
took that, took whatever I learned on TV, and say, for instance, I could do a... Uh... <laughs> song. So take a take a simple song like Mary Had a Little Lamb. Ever since then, I never, I never, never um, was ever in a house without a piano or a keyboard. If I travel, I take a travel keyboard with me, and I still play. No matter what, if I'm away from a piano, I always have like a travel keyboard, and I'm still playing. A lot of people always ask me, um, basically, how do I practice my scales and everything? I don't do regular scales. I don't do that. Because to me, it's a lot boring. I, I don't like to do it with both hands. Um, I don't do that at all. So what I usually do is I take chords. I, say, I take a chord, uh, instead of a regular, regular C chord, and make it like a seventh. Um, and also, what I do is I do major, uh, like a circle of fifths. So it's like... great action on it but um, I try my best to um, to make it fun just to do uh, different kind of rudiments and scales on my hands um, I like to take that same arpeggiation and and I'll then go to a different key Yeah, just basically. 
whatever I could do just to make it fun. Um, and then how I just learned how to do um, the boogie woogie part of it, I practiced different bass lines, of course. Um, Basically, uh, what's it, what they call it? Um, what I call it, one four one five. I forgot what the actual name is actually called. And I just like to uh, when I'm doing buggy buggy. pianos which is which is really cool um, but I like to have fun with my music you know just basically have lots and lots of fun with my music I don't like to be born with it and so say for instance um give you another example I love to um, play uh, my favorite song Sweet Georgia Brown instead of playing it like uh <laughs> Joanne Castle play one of her songs. He, she plays a different version of Sweet Georgia Brown. But what I did is I kind of like pepped it up a little bit. I'm like, you know, that boring version is terrible. It sounded like, sound like, um, sound like a beginner, you know? So what I did is I basically uh, took that same version and when uh, I took a little bit more octave, a little bit more power in. <laughs> It's a different expression than when I'm talking. Um, you know, because a lot of people's like, oh, when you talk, and you're different, you have a different expression, you have a different feeling when you play the piano. Yes, even with a slow song, a lot of people can say to me, Chris, can you do a slow song? I can, but it's not really slow. Um, take a good example. Um, where the trills come in, and I go, uh...
it up a little bit, uh, make it a little bit faster, make it more interesting. Um, same thing uh, with the uh, with the 12 tree rag. I've seen a lot of people play the 12 tree rag like uh, like this, uh, basically. <laughs> probably a newer piano uh, to play slow stuff. You know, it's funny, a lot of people always ask me, Chris, why do you prefer an upright piano to play on stage than a grand piano? I love playing on grand pianos. Don't, work, don't get me wrong, everybody. Uh, the grand piano has to have a lot of soul in it. You know, like usually when I play on stage with the grand piano, it's a newer grand piano. And I'm like, no, I don't want to actually play it. I'm going to be honest with you. It has to be an older grand piano, like say for um, from the 1920s or up, 1910s or up probably, uh, but the 1920s will be a lot better. Um, it has to be well taken care of, it has to have a nice good soul to it. Uh, that's for a grand piano. For an upright piano, um, it has to be a little bit older, almost the same specs as a grand piano, but with an upright piano, it's made for the kind of music that I play. Um, so I'll give you a good example. Uh, <laughs> Unless if it's like a concert grand that is real taken care of, but an upright piano has that um, has that go getter. Uh... <laughs> Especially when I'm pushing it down the street and have to stop at a corner and play somewhere. It comes in handy. A grand piano, um, I love it, but he has to stay stationary until, you know, then I'm ready to move it, which is pretty cool. You know what's cool? A fan always asks me, Chris, what's with the Hawaiian shirts? Am I Hawaiian? Um, I'm not Hawaiian. I'm actually Jamaican. Uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of people think I'm actually from Hawaii because I look kind of Samoan and everything. Um, I kind of have a little bit of, a, of the eyes. Um, I do have a lot of Asian in my family, um, but mostly I am Jamaican. And um, I, I grew up from New York though. <laughs> I grew up from New York. Um, I was born in Manhattan and I was raised in the Bronx, um, as the front of the story it actually tells you. But I, um, I kind of tell people when they're really interested, they come up to me like, where are you from? I look at them and say, I'm half Jamaican, half Hawaiian, can't you see? <laughs> I'm a Hawaiian. But, you know, it's it's different. And um, it's usually when people tell me where I'm from, kind of, um, you know, it's kind of like a private thing, you know, that you just don't want to tell people. You just want to be friendly with people and that's it, smile, you know, make sure it's not going to be, um, not anything that's going to cause trouble. Just, you know, I like to be friendly with well, everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. A lot of people basically wanted to know my story, where I was from, how did I, want to, how did I learn how to play the piano, how did I learn how to fix the piano, um, and why do I have a piano collection? I haven't gotten to the piano collection yet because usually, just very shortly, I like to play it with different pianos and I have a collection uh, that's mainly um, at my house. 
And as I um, collect more, I like to fix them. I like to donate them to um, to charities, um, to schools, libraries, charities. Um, because you know, to me, I like to give the gift of music for people who cannot afford a piano, um, and kids that cannot afford a piano, even schools. Um, I just like to give back. I like to give back and and to say, hey, take it. This this one's yours. But the story has to really, really get to me for me to actually donate a piano to them. And um, most of the time it does. Most of the time I come out crying. <laughs> but thank you so much, everybody, for watching this video. Click like, subscribe, follow me on everything. If you're on my Facebook, go to my YouTube. If you're on my YouTube, go to my Facebook page. And I have, if you cannot get to my Facebook friends page, you can easily get to my Facebook fan page. And please subscribe. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice day.